Melasiza is a group of yeasts commonly found on human and animal skin, making up over 90% of the fungi that live on our skin. If you have seen dandruff, then you have seen Melasiza, as it is linked to a common skin condition that is called seborrheic dermatitis, or dandruff of your face and scalp. Recent studies have shown that Melasiza may also promote cancers such as pancreatic, breast, and some skin cancers. Today, we will be discussing a new research looking into how this yeast can promote breast cancer. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Maria Zizian, a board-certified general surgeon and IFM-certified functional medicine physician. Please like, subscribe, and share to help this channel grow. So this study, the link is below, looks at how this type of yeast that's called Malassezia globosa may speed up the growth of breast cancer. I will call it M. globosa from now on. So breast cancer is one of the most common cancers in women, and it occurs when abnormal cells in the breast start growing out of control. Previous studies found this yeast in breast tumors and suggested that it could worsen the disease, but it wasn't clear how. So this study used experiments in mice and cancer cells in the lab to figure out how this yeast affects breast cancer growth, focusing on how it interacts with the immune system and fat metabolism as well. So to study breast cancer in mice, the researchers gave the mice a cancer-causing chemical called DMBA. After the cancer developed, they injected M. globosa yeast into the fat pads of the mice's mammary glands or mice's breasts. They had several groups. So one group of mice got injected with M. globosa and that was it. The other group got injected with M. globosa and was given an antifungal medication called amphotericin B. Finally, there were other groups that got injected with other types of yeast such as candida or saccharomyces. The researchers then tracked how long the mice lived, how big the tumors grew, and how much yeast was present in these cancerous tumors. Additionally, the researchers also used human breast cancer cells and mouse breast cancer cells in the lab. They tested how malassezia affected these cells' growth and movement. So what were the results? Here are the highlights of this study of the results. Mice that had M. globosa in their mammary fat pads had shorter lifespans and larger tumors than mice without the yeast. What about the groups that also got an antifungal medication? They showed that treating mice with Antifungal medication reduced the amount of yeast and the number of tumors, but unfortunately did not extend the mice's survival, which is very important, unfortunately. Meanwhile, other fungi such as Candida or Saccharomyces did not have the same effect, meaning that they did not make the cancer worse. There are several agents of cancer, as I will call them, in the case of the yeast infection. In these specific cases, those immune substances are IL-17A and macrophages. Let's start with IL-17A. Malassezia caused an increase in IL-17A, a protein that triggers inflammation and attracts macrophages to the tumor. Usually, macrophages are the cells that attack tumors or toxins. In general, they're supposed to protect us from any hostile agents. However, for some reason, instead of fighting the cancer, these macrophages actually help these tumors grow. The second aspect is equally interesting. As you may know, breast tissue contains a lot of fat, which Malassezia uses to survive and grow because Malassezia is a fat-loving yeast. The study showed that M. globosa increases the amount of a protein that's called SPHK1 or SPIG1. And that leads to a buildup of fat in tumor cells. This fat buildup helps the tumor grow even more. When the researchers used a technique called siRNA to reduce the amount of SPIG1 in breast cancer cells, the cells had less fat and the tumor growth slowed down. This suggests that SPIG1 plays an important role in how M. globosa makes breast cancer worse. Of course, what we care the most is the therapeutic potential of this study. How can this study help us cure breast cancer. The study suggests that treatments targeting either M. globosa directly itself or the protein it's as, as, as PIG1 or IL-177A could be actually the new targets to slow down the breast cancer. I also want to make a few points. Not every breast cancer 
could be presumed to be caused or linked with this malassezia globosa. All of this is a new research. So first of all, each breast cancer has to be tested for the presence of malassezia. Only after it's proved to be connected, then it could be targeted for treatment, targeting SPIG1 or IL-17. And please note that these treatments may or may not be well tolerated. So that's another aspect to think about because they, they may be quite toxic for the body. Another point that I would like to make is that our breast is composed of several tissues. There is a glandular tissue, there's connective tissue, and fatty tissue. The percentage of fatty tissue in the breast depends on many things, depends on genetics, age, on diet, etc. So I actually wonder if more, if higher percentage of fat in the breast is correlated with either higher predisposition uh, to malassezia infection. So it would be interesting to find out how obesity factors in this study. So an, another very, very interesting study. So I like the studies that could have a practical uh, component to them, practical effect, because that should be a goal to of any study. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.